Hi, welcome everybody to our sixth edition of Dissolving the Divide. I'm Leslie Powers, and my co-host and producer of the show is here's Derek Bartolicelli. And Dissolving the Divide was a brainstorm of Derek's that um, started with our recognition that there's so much division in the world, division between our within ourselves and between us as people, and that these divides are really seriously leading to great distraction and division. Um, on a global level that's threatening our freedom and distracting us from the truth. So we're here to have some real reasonable and, and heart-based conversations about these divides to help bridge the gap and bring us closer together. And we have, a, we have great guests today from the Levolution team. Derek. Yeah, definitely. Hey, I'm hey everyone. <laughs> hey, it's great to have you. Oh, yeah, great totally. to be here. Like, like yeah. say hello and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, so, Derek, why don't you uh, give them a little more intro? How did how did you come about uh, learning about the Levolution team here? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, yeah, through good old Facebook or something like that, and uh, these fine folks, uh, conscious parents, conscious you know, couple, great role models for those you know levels and all that stuff, and just hearing about their journey and actually having, you know, conversations with them. I'm rewinding it, you know, from the current time to, yeah, just, yeah, they take upon, you know, the medicinal nutritional knowledge of, you know, the likes of Dr. Seti and, and things of that nature. And, you know, they sell, you know, I wouldn't call it dietary supplements, but uh, I just call it uh, sacred medicine, more or less in a more conventional capsule, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but not to downplay that, but I ain't trying to like, you know, this ain't no sales pitch or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I've bought them. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been in contact, you know, more ever since and have personal phone numbers and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I was really just like almost dumbfounded, really flattered and honored that, you know, they have this, you know, website that you should check out that has a lot of, um, I wouldn't say truth speakers, but, you know, a lot of, uh, influential and knowledgeable and philosophical people spiritual as well and like from all walks of life in this one uh web page and uh lo and behold like i found you're <laughs> just being conscious of creation so yeah i was really grateful for that and uh just having a good connection making friends and they're yeah really approachable and inviting me out there i'm quite a journeyman at the moment so i think i might take a road trip we will see but uh yeah <laughs> to get more to the subject matter i'm so glad to have these people on because you know number one yeah we're this is the sixth episode and you know the first one was just you know leslie and i introduction but you know the four after that was really you know the the structural you know that's gonna build the house and what this episode is going to do is address the, you know, how a house is being made into a home, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we've had our master builder, Nate Cap to cap off last episode, which was brilliant. You know, I, I'm just every episode has just been so uh, incredible. And I, I'm so grateful for just, yeah, everything's just been uh, better than expected. Yeah. And yeah, to have you guys on. Yeah, please, you know. Yeah, John, Paul, Amy, and Sebastian. Thank you so much. I missed you know that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Please, please introduce yourselves. Share a little bit about your journey uh, to where you you are now. Whoever wants to start. Okay, go ahead. Um, my name is Amy Amy Pierce, and um, I'm a mom, a friend, a lover, um, an anarchist, um, a naturalist. And um, I grew up in Maine and we live in Maine now. I grew up as a little girl in Southern Maine, um, always outside, always with nature. And so nature was my church. She was my therapist, my friend. And I grew up with that strong bond with mother earth. Um, my family, I have two brothers um, and my mom and dad. And I grew up very, very close with them. Um, very close family, so I was very grateful. Um, I wasn't raised with much religion or anything like that. I was a free thinker, able to think in my house, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, I grew up, went to school, 
and graduated 2005 and went to the University of New Hampshire, studied wildlife biology. Mm. So I was a science major. Mm. Um, cool. Graduated mm. in 2009. I worked at a wildlife mm. hospital for 14 years. I started volunteering when I was young. So I worked with hawks, falcons, eagles, all sorts of mammals. Um, I did veterinarian work and I loved that. Um, and now I'm doing more people work, um, healing myself, uh, teaching, and um, starting to do that kind of work. Um, I'm a full-time mom, so I am always playing with him and um, we're learning together every day. Um, I learned uh, natural law about four years ago, and I've been aligning my behaviors with natural law ever since. Um, my whole family and I are now aligning with natural law, um, and I've chose right action. I choose jobs that are morally okay and correct, and I don't choose jobs that aren't. So we work from the home, and um, we're in a tax sale business to help people get money back from foreclosures. When they get their homes taken away, we help them get money back. That's rightfully theirs and we find them. And um, that's, I garden, I started gardening two years ago. I can't, we can't our own food. We started that a couple years ago. Wow. Make my own bread. So I'm always learning and integrating. I love learning. I love it. Amazing. So that's and a little bit about it. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you're really implementing what you learn. You're really putting it into action. So that's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. What an amazing uh, background, a great foundation, right, for real living. Yeah, absolutely. Very grateful. Yeah, and Jean Paul, tell us a little about your background. Yeah. Well, yeah, I grew up uh, in a very competitive environment, Catholic family, seven boys, and uh, sports and um, church and school and very rigid it was it was difficult um, I have many people telling me what to do all the time with the brothers and coaches teachers and most adults and so I began to build up that spiritual immune system and I realized this doesn't make any sense and it I, I kind of sussed it out at a young age and was that rebel uh, and uh, kind of giving everyone the finger, you know? And mm -hmm. so that was kind of my rebel spirit, always questioning the answers, never really getting along with coaches and authority figures that well, uh, teachers and whatnot, priests. Um, so. I had to discover nature and discover the truth and I wasn't really taught a whole lot by the family. Um, I had to go out of the comfort zone of the safety net. When I went to California, learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've always mm -hmm. just been curious, wanting to know what's going on yeah. and yeah. just always wanting to know, thirsty for truth, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what, what brought you to Maine? Here. Um, my folks were here in the southern Maine area. I always loved Maine. It has a lot of California traits with the ocean, the mountains, the um, the lakes and the rivers, and the natural beauty, and way less people. So it's mm -hmm. kind of um, yeah. It's quiet and I don't know. Yeah, it's the, it was a vacation spot. And then we we fell in love here. And then my folks moved south and we stayed here. Hmm. And are you living off grid? You know, what, what kind of yes. home um, have you created for yourself? Yes, we're, we're pretty minimal. Uh, we live the mortgage lifestyle, the big, the, uh, death pledge that mortgage means we didn't even realize Jordan but, Maxwell taught us that yeah the uh so we we were raising our son as, as a babe and we wanted to get land so we sold our house and uh got some land off the grid we brought 
a trailer with a patio attached and very little regulation, very little, um, uh, yeah, really just like authority out here we found is pretty free. The people are very genuine. It's kind of like the wild east because it's mm -hmm. it's out here. Yeah. Not yeah. many people make make it this far east. It's rugged, yeah, cold. Yes, it is. And uh, we embrace the seasons, though. We we love it. It's just, um, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you go crazy. You know, you just be miserable. You know. Yeah, fighting and nature is really a good idea, right? <laughs> you gotta yeah, go with the flow. Yeah. Yeah, I How walked outside today to the compost with no shoes on. I've been just oh. doing it every day and we get stronger. Yeah. Yeah, like Wim Hof. We uh we love Wim Hof. He's an inspiration, that guy. And oh, yeah. uh going out into the cold and yeah, just it's all mind over matter. We're kind of try to toughen ourselves up. You got a lot of snow over there right now? Yes, we just got fresh snow this morning. I was snowboarding down the mountain today this morning. Oh my gosh, lovely. So, so yeah, tell it's us incredible. How did Levolution come about and what's your intention um with with Levolution and what do you offer? Share a little that, bit about that. That was a um it was my first awakening happened in about in 2011 on that farm. And I was just heart opened up my mind and just a real great awakening of spirituality um who i was and i just had didn't know what it was and what what to call it but it was an evolution of spirituality of love and then i just said love evolution that's what's going on right now because that love within me was starting to well up and my ego was um, kind of quieting, getting um, more humble because I was alone a lot and in solitude with nature, with nature, yeah, eating helps. correctly, drinking nice pure water from the mountains um, by the Yuba River. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was an incredible two weeks. I cried for about two weeks straight, really cleansed all my, absolved all my mess that I've had, you know, within, um, it was an experience coming out of that and, uh, had, had a lot of clarity, um, from our language, spirituality, and just, um, who I was and realizing we're all chasing external things when it's all hidden within us, you know, you know that love frequency. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then we took it into the 3D, you know? Yes. So. Yeah, when we met, then um, we brought it into the 3D with a health supplement and uh, and then just wanted to, you know, as well teach occulted knowledge that we knew and what our experiences were and the law and- uh, Learned all of this stuff together, all yeah. of that truth together. We learned from David Icke broke open so many doors for us. And um, we started learning more and more from all like, these mentors that we were finding on, online. It was yeah. beautiful, wonderful. And uh, yeah, with Passio, we discovered him and I was lobstering and <laughs> causing a lot of harm in the commercial fishing industry and um, mm. for a paycheck. And I knew in my heart it was wrong. It was so much death and dead fish and stink and everything around. It was a very low vibration, you know? He quit in one day. We didn't know what we would do for money. Had no idea. We just said, we can't harm lobsters anymore. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah. we quit the job and we yeah. figured it out. So with but... that, with that movie Earthlings we watched and um, I quit my job and stopped eating meat right in that one day, right after the movie, basically. Mm -hmm. It was yes. just, uh, I couldn't take, I couldn't take uh, the feeling, the cognitive dissonance I was experiencing. And um, I just had to yeah. be, be honest with myself, stop lying to myself. Yeah, it, it sounds for sure for you, John, Paul, that there was a real process of transformation and, um, you know, shedding 
some things from your life. Um, yeah, through the, but absolutely. to do it, it's like it seems like you had to be in nature and and quiet. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that stillness uh, is an incredible. Mm -hmm. I had, I could totally relate with what you you know oh. went through because yeah they lost them. Oh shit! They pop hmm. out. We'll uh, continue for a second, just uh, and hopefully they'll pop on. I'm gonna keep an eye out for them. Fine. I mean, I, yeah, it was. It was like the most profound weeping of my, of my life. And they come. Perfect. They're on bottom now. There, there you are. You're back. Symmetry. We lost you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So, all right, cool. <laughs> I wanted you to hear this also, uh, Jean-Paul, because I mean, like my awakening was kind of similar, yeah. but it was kinda like the polar opposite oh, cool. because I was like in the city of Paris, you know, there's like wow. 12 million people or, or in this one, you know, circumference of, you know, the capital city of France. It's not, yeah. some people think like Paris is a country, anyways, um, but yeah, just like, and everyone thinks you know a, a spiritual awakening it's like unicorns and rainbows and just like high vibes good times and all this stuff and it's like no it's an ac actual the true you know bio spiritual regenesis that starts with you know that prima materia that you were doing already like being out in nature and eating all that stuff and like having your body get more activated if you will and just a, a more pure vessel you know that Absolutely. pure love solution to you know you know, part of that dissolution or, uh, you know, the alchemical process, obviously it's like, yeah, the false identity, all that stuff is just, you know, burnt to the ground. It's got to burn. And uh, that yeah. is absolutely going to be quite the process of just like found weeping and all these things. And like, just like realizing what all the wrongs you might've done or participated in and yada, yada. All, yeah. All this, this, this process, right. Involves, um, some some discomfort you know and facing yourself like facing the work Very you were doing you know um and yeah. you know a shedding a cleansing a detoxing is where you know themes i'm hearing and maybe we could talk a little bit more about this and the and the importance of that and how that you know relates maybe even to the superfood that you have you know it's yeah awesome yeah when i met john um, Paul, I was slowly eating better because I felt better from eating better. And I noticed that I was feeling a lot better. So that's why I started eating healthy. Um, and I took that on for myself and being responsible for what I was eating because my folks, mm -hmm. they didn't start eating, um, you know, stop eating animals and everything like that. Um, but I do tell them you could feel much better if you change your diet. Um, some people don't realize our diet has a lot to do with how we feel spiritually, mentally, and physically. Uh, when mm -hmm. I stopped eating meat about five years ago, I felt a heavy fog come off me and I could see things much clearer. Um, I don't know if anyone experienced that, but I noticed um, a lot clearer vision for myself. Um, and I, I go through emotions like waves. I always say women no, and men saying, were like waves. And so it's good to feel our emotions, cry, cleanse, and then you feel better when you get them, the emotions out. Um, Absolutely. And that's what I'm learning on my journey every day. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I think that's really important to under, under emphasize. Oh, Derek, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So like, the title of this video is kind of like, you know, conscious parenting and kind of stuff. And uh, as far as, you know, like the the new era and like breaking these native cycles of, you know, the improper ways of parenting and this and that and how, yeah, Amy, what you're talking about with the emotions and stuff and just like how the old paradigm of, especially like on the masculine side of things, uh, John Paul, I'd love to hear, well, you had like six brothers or something, you know, we all know that, you know, it's kind of taboo or dogmatic or even, you know, like risque for a guy to, you know, show his emotions and cry. That was seen as weak and this and that. Uh, a lot of people just didn't know it was yeah. it's a form of catharsis, uh, uh, therapy and healing, you know, and just like getting over things and releasing, it, you know, John, uh, 
What you got to say, brother? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Also, Derek, yeah, I was in San Francisco living in my van before I got to the uh, to the farm. So it was similar to you in Paris. I was in this huge city and just so miserable in a, in a you know, valeting and just um, trying to keep up with my friends who had all this stuff. And I didn't really identify with any of it. And once I got out to that, to the land and nature, I w grew so much and just learned about myself. I was earthen every day. And uh, yeah, just feeling all those feelings of ego or how I m maybe mistreated somebody or was mistreated. And just that two weeks, um, I was uh, manicuring cannabis and just, just shed so much fear in the beginning i got there i thought a bear was gonna come right and get me right between you know my van and where I, the building i was in and at the end of the two weeks i was going out for long walks in the middle of the night and i could hear the bears down at the yuba river and i, and I had no fear anymore I, it was all gone and it was just just enjoying those peaceful beings down there and having, you know, no bears going to attack me right now. And just, it was incredible. So being in, in nature helped to alleviate your fear of nature. There had to be a process of like vulnerability really to step into yeah. that unknown, right? The foreign land landscape. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And what we what we know we don't fear anymore. So that we've learned that, you know. Yeah. Know. yeah. Absolutely. And the inner creates the outer. So I re realize that that inner uh, that inner divide is creating this outer divide, which we all experience. And so with that alchemical process of self love of raising your consciousness raising awareness and raising your vibration right because tesla we love tesla we everything's energy vibration frequency the real nikola and, tesla uh, who's they, rolling in his grave thanks to you know some musky business sorry <laughs> gotta caveat that real quick sorry, <laughs> exactly exactly yes and uh so yeah just um yeah it was an incredible um spiritual process and then kind of went back to sleep though so after i came home i went to maine after california's awakening and i kind of went back into the matrix a bit and you know religion um i started reading the bible more and figuring out what that meant and just had way more questions and answers in there for me um and then yeah just started really looking into everything a friend in 2008 uh told me about oh the president isn't really the one in charge and i said what do you mean you know and i said oh what are you talking about you know like because i was asleep and uh and then he said oh look it up bilderberg and i i said all right and then that kind of was in 2008 i read a book they uh, don't want you to know about about kevin trudeau and hmm. that helped me to, to really um question and he he exposed a lot of uh things for me and helped to jump start my uh my awakening yeah so, so it's like this process of like looking out into the world starting to gather information and see it in a different way to realize that a lot of your you know automatic beliefs or worldviews were inaccurate, right? And it kind of blowing your, your world a bit. And then yes. starting um, sort of a new life, a new way of being together. And I, and I wondered how you might talk about how your relationship has served to continue this evolution and growth, this love-evolution process for you guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll just make I'll just say something about that. Um, when we met, we both had beliefs about certain things. And 
we started to look into them and put our beliefs aside and say, let's really look into this for what it is. And for example, vaccines, vaccinations, I was 100%, I'd go into the doctors and get, get my HPV shot, I'd line right up. I thought vaccines were just uh, helpful and um, good for us. I had no idea. And so John Paul came home and he said, we're not, we're going to look into the vaccines, you know, we're not going to jump into that. Right. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll look into it. And I did research every single day. I listened to thousands of stories. I listened to moms and dads all over the world tell their experience. And then I learned from them and decided what we'll do with Sebastian. And we said, no, thank you. And we used that powerful word, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did our investigation mm -hmm. confident because we did our research and that's what we tell people we're not telling you what to do you do your own research and your, yeah. your own discernment we always tell yeah. people to do but yeah. back yeah. to where we met yeah. what, what do you, what oh, did so, you say honey so yeah it was um you know you can only awaken so much um on your, your own but when we we got to, uh, we came familiar with David Icke's information, really resonated with that. Mm -hmm. And I was dissolving my belief system completely with the Christianity and all that. And uh, mm -hmm. she was dissolving hers and her mm -hmm. um, areas. And, and then Mark's information just really mm -hmm. made so much sense. It was just like right on and fit so well, like a perfect fit and aided with. Because it was truth. Because you know? of that, the truth that it is, you know, these hidden laws, it just, just makes so much sense. We all kind of know about them, but, but then we're told, oh no, it's just, you know. Um, and their sciences, they're based off truth. It's all based off truth instead of beliefs. Yeah. Because beliefs are um, sometimes, yeah, not, well, not been true we always say if you have to believe in anything believe in yourself yeah mm -hmm. boom yeah like that and you know yeah lots of comes into the, the knowledge versus belief you know it's like it's best to Absolutely. know things and to just believe whatever of course but it it, it yeah. sounds like you know you both I mean, came with yeah, your doing own research is one thing but our audio is a little glitchy. Um, you you both came with your own areas of of knowledge, right? And um, and then coming together created a bit of a spiral awakening, like an enhancement almost um, to yeah. to knowledge and growth. Would you say you know like I liked what you were saying, John Paul, about you can awaken only so far as an individual person, and so the further awakening comes in some kind of interaction, would you say? How is that? Yes. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so that's a great point. Um, yeah, so I learned a little bit about manifesting and I was writing in my journal about my dream girl and then there she was, she showed up. And uh, I, I was just so amazed and we, uh, we were just fast friends instantly. And um, we were both living with our folks. So we got, we wanted to be with each other all the time learning. We both had that thirst for learning, which is very important. We wanted to know more. And they tell me about the eiders, which are the <laughs> sea ducks. And I was telling her about the chemtrails. I did not know about the chemtrails, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were informed forming each other of each other's different perceptions, you know, uh, broadening each other's perceptions. I love that. Yeah. And open, having open minds together and curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. It's like two little kids, you know, you just want to know more. All right, let's go play. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we had a conversion van at the time. Um, so we could just go and, hang in the van and talk and get to know each other we talked a lot yeah. we talked a lot yeah learned about each other and uh yeah and she had that mountain and i was from more of the ocean and the beach 
and she had the mountain knowledge and the mm -hmm. um, forest and the wood knowledge. And so she taught me so much about, you know, um, chaga, you know, cow's milk. How she can help me connect that. This cow, this cow's milk is for a cow, not for you, for us. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make that connection without, mm -hmm. you know, her influence. So, yeah, how did you, point, Leslie, can I just say, ask real quick, because yeah, yeah. uh, I'm really trying to tie these things back into what we're getting at. And, uh, you know, the, growing up, every individual grew up from some kind of family unit or everyone was born from a mother and all this stuff. And uh, like whatever household we were born into, we have these traditions and routines and things that are just like, it's something like milk, you know, something like that. Like, oh, my mom ate like that. And, uh, and I want to say it might have been David Icke as well. And like for everyone who gets triggered by that guy, like he he wrote like a dozen textbook grade, you know, like things. It's not just, you know, the the buzzword of, you know, he always, you know, everyone has to mention reptiles when they hear his name, which is complete, utter crap. You know, it's a it's a slander and all that. And a lot of people haven't even read a single page of one of his books. Nor Our son reads much of his lectures, which are like eight hour marathons. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good on him, man. He talks about a lot of spirituality and all that stuff. Grandpa, so anyway, uh, what I wanted to ask you guys, um, yeah, so like this example of you know, or you know, why there's a you know, they cook a fish in this pan, you know, but they always have to cut off you know, like a third of it, and they always say, uh, like the young generations are like, oh, that's how grandma did it. And it turns out grandma didn't have a big enough pan to fit the whole fish in. Exactly. So they're just, oh, it's waste and all this stuff. And just like lack of uh, individual, you know, critical thinking and just like self-expression because we kind of feel like we have to fit into certain boxes when we're growing up and, you know, and like trying to meet expectations from parents and this and that. And it seems like what you guys are doing, you know, which seems to be quite a polar opposite. Well, actually, Amy, like you guys are quite different because you, you seem to have, you know, very conscious parents and that's great. You know, it's almost like a rarity, unfortunately, but if we're, you know, a few in the world and that's how it's been for millennia and since antiquity pretty much, but you know, not to rag on the old timers or this and that we're in the here and now trying to flip the script and, you know, uh, birth, uh, you know, a new generation of conscious kids from conscious parents like you guys are doing. So, yeah. Uh, how are you? And John I have Paul, to just able, add like, to snap out of that conditioning and tradition but yeah amy please go for it sorry yeah yeah you're good i just wanted to say my parents were yeah. against all the decisions i made um so they weren't they were just loving they were open to me oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> but, um, my, my folks last christmas and we're not doing christmas anymore saturnalia holiday and my mom uh, my family mm. had had a hard time understanding that but i still voice what i have learned and why I made that decision. And my mom still loves me and I still love her. Um, and not va vaccinating our son, that was hard for them, but they respecting my choice. It's John Paul, now it's our turn to be parents and we're gonna parent how we feel, how we, how we see fit. So that it has been, it has been yeah. hard. I, I really think what you just described kind of highlights the, the way that divisions can happen when, when people um, maybe go on, the, on a journey of truth seeking and awaken to see the world that, as, that it's not what it was told you know, to be. And so then there's this uh, potential conflict or actual conflict between you and your family, your parents. And... Um, and how to separate from those traditions, family, you know, automatic ways of living and, and step into your full authentic selves and your lifestyle, but also maintain the loving connection. I think that's really what we're here trying to, uh, to, to inspire is like, we can, we can divide, but we can be still in a loving connection. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, yes, Absolutely. definitely. Yep. And that's that love. We're all um, that love frequency that as babies, we come out, then the programs get layered on us. Right. And we have to get back, back to that inner child and be in our best and uh, being your best friend, being comfortable with being alone. And and 
and just observe, right? We're here to observe and experience and uh, mm -hmm. and discern as well, you know. Um, but that's important, getting to that inner child. Being around children helps bring out the inner child. Um, and I had a lot of nieces and nephews to play with, and I learned uh, about parenting through my brother's mistakes, basically. Mm -hmm. So, so how are you applying your your knowledge, your awakening, and to your parenting experience? What? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a that. great question. So, yeah, we've pretty much gone of the uh, antithesis of how I was raised. We don't no school, um, no uh, no church, no sports. I, we just teach him out here. He plays with us. You know, we teach him gardening. We teach him about skills, fire stove, about nature. Yeah, how to you know make a a fire and um, but integrating a lot of the um, stuff we've learned with him just by saying no, really, to the medical mafia. It's just no, thank you. We know better and and. Uh, and by using that word, no, you know, pissed off our parents, but we know better. We had the knowledge, we, we did the research, we, we discerned the information to make an educated guess, you know, an educated decision, not guess, but using that trivium, you know. And you got to know to say no. The knowledge with the yes, you do. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I, a pediatrician came up to me and said, I'll see your son and give him vaccines for free. Is it money that that's stopping you from do, doing this? And I told him all about the things about what's in the vaccines and he didn't know any of it, but I talked to him and I think I know, and he was very open. And so we had a good conversation and he saw my son on a hike one day and couldn't believe how healthy he was. And that was that. I cleaned houses for him. So that's why he asked if he could vaccinate my son and, and do that. So you just wow. got to stick up for your children. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they are, they're so vulnerable, the kids. We got to um, protect them, you know, literally. Um, because I, I wasn't really protected as a kid so um i want to be there for son and uh so that he doesn't have to go through the suffering and the pain that i went through you know and the the lies too the bullying in school and yeah um, the vision within school yeah and we're both home with sebastian because we both have the masculine and feminine and we have we allow him to have mommy and daddy and i think that helps him a lot yeah. having both parents yeah yeah absolutely yeah, it's, it's a, a two-parent job right Right, having oh, both of ahead. your full presence, having both of your full presence and your influence from each of your, um, you know, unique selves, right? Very important to balance that feminine, masculine in, in the child experience in a nurturing way, very nurturing. So talk a little about your parenting style and, you know, how the difference between, say, an authoritarian approach to parenting versus, I know, I mean, you've talked about that being in opposition to conscious parenting. Yes. So when um, we gave birth, everything, everything was natural. I wanted to have all natural birth if I could. And um, his mom, actually, she had seven boys and she told me, your body knows what to do. Mm, it's yeah, like nice. waves. Contractions come, but you will get over it. And that advice helped me so much. I said, my body knows what to do. My body knows yes. what to do. And Sebastian came out. It was wonderful, painful, yes, but we had no medication, um, nothing like that. And um, we did attachment parenting. So when he wanted to nurse, we fed him and um, he was always with us very close. We slept with him in the bed. Um, we still do all together. And um, we never rolled over on him. None of that wasn't a problem. Um, some parents are scared of that, but 
it really wasn't an issue. Um, we never ever did that. And um, yes, I very. Yes. yes. And also, uh, what was the question? Oh, authoritarian versus the conscious. So yeah, right from the beginning, we knew they were wanting to try to jab them. Mm -hmm. And so we said, no, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to go home to really get them, uh, you know, and, and loving uh, a parent. And, uh, and Daddy followed them down to the hearing test. They said, we're going to take Sebastian for a hearing test. And Daddy followed them yeah. <laughs> and went into the same room to make sure Sebastian. Yeah, was, you, you know, got to watch, watch your babies in the yeah. hospital. <laughs> yeah, he was a couple hours old and I didn't trust anyone in there. <laughs> so I'm going to go right with my baby wherever he's going. And my, uh, our baby, excuse yeah. me. I just wanted to highlight that in the hospital, when you have a baby in the hospital, they take your baby away from you really quickly, right? They have some idea that it, they're compelled to have to do this and that, you know? And so like making a stand to, to if you even have a baby in the hospital, which I don't think is the best place to have a baby, but um, necessarily, but to have that baby yeah skin to yeah. skin and to make that connection and that attachment that you talked about amy is so vital and so you know these patterns in the hospital where they justify somehow to take babies away and separate them from the mother and the father is one of the first places and ways that i think this division happens um and it's i i know personally like you know my first baby i i was it um hoping to do a home birth and we were at home giving birth and she just happened to get her head stuck in just the way and we had to go into the hospital and um, ended up with a c-section and you know but i was so invested and i wanted that baby with me immediately i wanted to establish that nursing relationship i i very much was al aligned with you and me around you know wanting that uh, attachment to be really a strong foundation to co-sleep. I had my baby under my left arm, you know, and nursing and there was no, it was so peaceful. It was so fluid, you know, and, and lovely. Um, and there's a lot of indoctrination around babies needing to be born in, you know, that it's not safe, you know, and all this, and I and I really um, admire that you're inner. You listen to that inner knowing, and um, and also the knowledge that you sought, you know, to raise your child differently and to say no to this like mainstream way of starting kids' lives in the world. Yeah. Animals don't give their babies away. Yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy. Um, Really, you know, when you think about having a baby and all the ways that the system is designed to separate you from, you know, in the hospital, taking the baby away to test their hearing and whatever they do, put drops in their eyes and weigh them, oh, their temperature's not right. Let's, you know, instead of putting that baby swaddled on your body, you know, they put in a little separate container in a cubicle in a room, you know, where they're not getting touched, you know, it's craziness. And, and so then we come home and oftentimes the economic demands are such that parents have to leave their kids in daycares and, you know, in schools. And, and so I just want to hear your thoughts on wh why you've chosen, like, not to do that path and, and, and the, advan the benefits you're getting by doing it different. Yeah, that, that is um, a great question. So even before I had met Amy, I said I'd never put my child into a school system because I'd see I'd been there myself. I would not Talk want about it. Where it comes from. Um, just yeah, basically separates us from our soul, our spirit. That's what school does. Okay, and it 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 slowly creates the acceptance of slavery that it's mm -hmm. okay. And uh, go get a job. Uh, Don't ask questions. And so that for, uh, I, I wouldn't um, want that on anyone. So it was real easy to say no thank, thank oh, you to the schools. Wow. I went there and I didn't learn much how to skip class and stuff, you know. But uh, 
And a lot of the times they'd school as well. If you have a hard time, they might call you, they say you have a problem. And I think that starts ourselves. And we might believe what they say and have that for our lives if we're not aware of it. So I think yeah. we need to bring the children and, and you know, tell them they're fabulous. Yeah. They're great. They're born geniuses. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right. The, the experience of a child in a school is very much about sit down, be still, do what you're told, jump when we say jump, don't horse play, you know, don't be too wild, sit in a circle, you know, it's all this, um, and it's all separate from the parent for hours and hours and hours, you know. Now, group, it's like group think, do as you're told, truth comes from authority. Yeah. And uh, the teacher, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't like it one bit the first day going. I remember going into kindergarten going, what am I doing? This is, I don't want to go here. Same. And I, I remember kids being bullied and I would sit with them and, and, and sit and I'd get made fun of for sitting with the other kids that were being bullied. But our actions matter. And I went to a pizza shop and the girl said, thank you so much for sitting with me. That made me just, you know, it prevented me for, from just, you know, committing suicide or whatever. Oh, she and saw the girl a couple years. I saw the girl years later and she thanked me for sitting with her because the kids made, wow. made fun of her. And, and I, so uh, school is, it can be, yeah, very hard for children's school. It's very hard on their soul and their spirit and their confidence. It comes, it comes from care though. That's where the decision came. Uh, and I wanted to thank you guys for caring enough to make the show um, uh, before I forget too. Um, but the care mm -hmm. that says, no, I'm not going to subject my son to the, ridiculed by other kids that you know are here are coming from who knows where so i didn't like that type of um, treatment and i wouldn't subject um, our son to that and uh we're we're the best teacher for him we um are in this for the long run with him uh david james rodriguez he's an amazing uh, mentor yeah. and inspiration and he said, "You're in the. You're going to be with your son for 80 years. Why are you? You're the qualified to teach him." I thought that is beautiful. You no. Know? Yeah, yeah, that helped yeah, me we'll a get lot. Him. Remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he's he's awesome. You're neighbor, Leslie. <laughs> yeah. So. so. <laughs> So the child being with you creates this foundation of security and a strong mm -hmm. foundation of family, which I think, you know, has generally been really attacked and um, divide, you know, separated and weakened, you know, in our culture. So, so you're um, choosing a different lifestyle that's really valuing yourselves, one, as legitimate teachers, as as the right um, rightful influencers of your own child based on morality and principles and connection to nature. It's a lovely thing. Um, yeah, so I, what do you see? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Thank, thank you. you. Are you sure you were gonna ask a question, but uh, I ahead. just wanna, I wanna bring this back a little bit because yeah, you touched on authority and tying in what, with what you just said, Leslie, and yeah, like, brilliant points all around everyone. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, uh, when you ha yeah have the proper gnosis and the knowledge, and you are you know still a, a student of life and this stuff, that's all the science of life and all this stuff. You are like the legitimate like authorities. Uh, you have that sovereignty within yourselves, and you're trying to just pass that on to you know your child, and that's like the most proper authority. And you're kind of putting natural law as the authority, not man-maids, whatever, or even like, you know, your shadow ego stuff and what you've been conditioned to from, you know, learning from whatever parents or, you know, whatever influenced you in your life up to this point, right? But, you know, we're born into this world, you know, like naked, you know, umbilical and all this stuff sometimes. And, and then we see we're subjected to all types of authority, a lot of toxic authority from, sorry to say it, but, you know, I wouldn't say toxic parents, but, you know, maybe unconscious. 
some are actually that toxic, you know, uh, people that don't love themselves and bring another life form into the world that they don't have. Like you said, if you don't have love for yourself, you cannot give it to anyone else. But anyways, going back to authority, like, yeah, we have the, the robity, you know, kind of some symbolic of, you know, religious authority, but in the medical room, first and foremost, yeah, you might get isolated and stripped from that mother maternal divine feminine that is needed because that, you know, like we mentioned with Mario West, you know, that you know, masculine feminine uh, balances within each and every soul on this planet. And it, it's just a, a law of nature, you know, or laws of the universe, whatever, you know, like semantics, but <laughs> so <clears throat> these involve these false authoritative figures, whether it be, you know, types of, you know, forms of religion, but yeah, real religion, whatever flavor of it. And then, yeah, yeah, the governmental authority and then, you know, the parental of that child is influenced by all these things and like the mainstream media authority, you know, newspapers authority and all these, you know, manufactured narratives, if you will. And then, yes, like when you grow up and you go to school, you have the teacher authority and all this stuff. And it's just like it's people are berated for these false notions birth. So, uh, yeah, it's maneuvering through that matrix is quite a conundrum if you don't have the proper parents' guidance and, you know. Yeah, you lost into this Absolutely. abyss. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think um, with the the parenting yeah. in that we don't put ourselves on the uh, this more guides and stewards and guiding him and teaching him mm -hmm. what we know and sharing that um thirst for knowledge and thirst for learning. Um, oh, great. And yeah, we're always learning. We're yeah. always lear learning about, we're big birders, we love birds, and uh, teaching that love of nature, love for the animals to him uh, really has uh, been so fun. And kind of like we're growing up for the second time, but doing it our way. That's beautiful. Yeah, I really admire that it's it's as if, you know, you guys are uniting in your love of learning and knowledge, your your pursuit of truth, and that this is something that connects you and um and it gives you the power really together to be able to say no to those things that are that it defy truth, that defy the knowledge, you know, that you're you're awakening to. Um and that being united together in that is so powerful, really important. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. How, so, how do you guys face Go ahead. Sorry. I was just wondering, I imagine, I mean, every couple along the way faces conflicts, right? You know, different um, rigidities or like areas of resistance, right? How have you guys worked through those things? That book, seller, that book. Yeah, well, being not giving a sh shit what people think of you is really helpful. We'll call each other names to test each other, you know, try to make sure we don't take things personal. And we try to guide each other to be the best version that we can be. So we take that criticism and then we try to integrate it. And we're reading this book from Mars are from Venus mm -hmm. and it really yeah. helps us get resolve our problems like John Paul is really learning how to be a good listener even more so and I'm learning about more about appreciation and we want to learn and get better in our relationship so we we yeah. we're open to that which is really nice and it correlates yeah. with like a goal <clears throat> relationships are like gardens you got to do the weed work. You got to weed it, weed the stuff out. You got to give it attention and care, and uh, and uh, yeah, then they'll you know grow a nice crop mm -hmm. for you, and you'll have a great friendship, you know. But it's a kind yeah, of a two-way. Do a little yeah, feng shui. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like people are like, oh, like this person's so high maintenance, but if just like. What you guys do is so beautiful and I love it. Just, you know, that constant, uh, up, back to, you know, first cosmic law of just, you know, approach to life and just wanting to do better and make the right choice on a day to day basis. And that co-creative spark with your partner and this and that, and like 
having to you know weave that together amidst all the you know subtle differences small or large and all these things sorry <laughs> so uh yeah it's um <clears throat> it makes things so much more easier and it makes the high maintenance stuff low, low maintenance or no maintenance at all because it's like any kind of maintenance and how my approach has been and like i don't feel any kind of stress or drama or just the conflicts are gonna arise right but uh it's all about yeah having patience and, and all that good stuff. yeah I, I love that analogy to the garden tending the garden and it's yeah. a maintenance it's something you do ongoing it's something there's seasons to this and and there's a patience yeah. and you know you have to be present you know and so like you have to be present to tend your garden you're present to tend your relationship and uh slowing down life in a way that you know separating from the mainstream um you know uh, rat race uh, you know probably allows i really like the, the open-mindedness the open to learn from each other the being willing to stand in your own um center of your individual self as you you know um oh, wow work things out in communication and basing it on a love of learning and growth. So those are some things I'm hearing. Absolutely. Yeah. And love for truth is the highest love in the universe. So that's where we, we meet there with the truth. Yeah, we have that as our foundation. So just like building a house, you have a nice solid foundation. You're going to have mm -hmm. a, a solid house. It won't mm -hmm. tip over in the wind, you know? Very and, good. Uh, yeah, very that, good point. Yeah, that um, that love for truth. I forgot a point I was gonna make. Uh, anyway, um, so the foundation. I, uh, oh, go on. With full siblings, parents, whatever, they might love a, a different type of truth that might not necessarily be the the actual truth of certain matters, because you know we're led to you know, astray from, you know, certain narratives that aren't necessarily true and this and that. And people obviously have these attachments to it. People want to call it ego attachments or whatever, but yeah, people can be really hard headed or just, you know, calcified on certain, you know, things about, you know, how the world. So what was like, like the most the resistance thing? that you came across with your, uh, with your, uh, let's just say your parents, for example, um like as far as like you, well, uh like a, yeah i don't really valid, you know or something like that or something I didn't improve of or whatever yeah you said you're quite well, we're, we're starting yeah. To, yeah we're starting to say no to a lot of the family functions and uh they're they're kind of they're wondering why and i kind of didn't i don't really talk to a lot of my brothers too um I talked to my I'm mom. taking it back when you were a kid growing and, uh, up though, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Well it was rough because yeah. yeah, they would go out and then the brothers would babysit and I was the punching bag and you know and whatever else, yeah. So it was um, the, awak the awakening yeah. comes from the yeah. um, experience of being a uh, hurt you know, by the mainstream Absolutely. majority, right? You know, the brothers who took that power, that control dynamics and among, you know, into themselves and said they could pick on you, right? Yeah, 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 it was, um, it was rough there. Um, I couldn't wait to get older where I could make my own decisions and, and uh, yeah, get out from under the nest, really. And, uh, but you and your mom get along good. But yeah, me and my mom have a good relationship. Oh, that's the point I wanted to make. So I'm getting back to abandonment issues. Mm. So when we learned about this first seven years, right, we realized we have a big responsibility. We got to really hunker down these first seven years and prevent mm -hmm. any abandonment issues. That's basically the point of what we're doing. Um, yes. And not saying it's it's it can, can happen, but... I had a father that was a, a pilot, so he was gone a lot. So I had a father abandonment issue, and but I, I've dealt with. Um, it was really when we learned that, you know, programming his 
formative years, putting in that subconscious, recording everything right now. And it's just, uh, yeah, we wa better watch what you say and do it because he's he's going to um, take on these these uh, behaviors. So teaching yeah. them right from wrong. Yeah. And he's probably heard most of Mark's presentations, our son and David. So hopefully those that in his subconscious and later, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that foundation in the formative years, you know, yeah. those critical windows of, of growth. And like you said, you know, that's where the programming comes in for children, the found, you know, for their, their consciousness and protecting that, protecting that and being very conscious yeah. and intentional about what you're exposing your child to and not not encouraging that abandonment wound that comes from separation from the parental figures. And we as a society totally underestimate the impact of that separation and the uh, wounds that are uh, subconsciously created in, in people from being separated. And I think that our economic system is really a big part of that, separating you know, the forced work schedules and separating from your kids. And we just normalize that now. And I, I'm really realizing now, you know, I have three older kids and I'm realizing now how much I missed of their lives. And, um, you know, some of that foundation by necessity, you know, my experience of necessity, you know, to be a working parent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. tough. Yeah. I mean, it's the hardest job that there is here, I think. That mm -hmm. self work and then that being a parent, I think, are the toughest, you know. They go hand in hand, right? Because our children are our teachers as well. You know, just like relationships Absolutely. are our teachers, that kind of rub, sometimes through the rub, we have to grow, we have to face ourselves. And then we have our children that do, that rub us and push us mm -hmm. in all sorts of ways, right? Yeah, and, and then you know, in yeah. psychology, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, Leslie. I think I've done that too much already, but. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Derek, we're good. I no, like the in comments. Youngings, uh, Carl Jung, he talks a lot about, you know, how relationships are gonna, you know, reveal a lot of shadow work that needs to be done on both individuals and it's going to be mirrored back at them intimate levels and it will bring up a lot of you know uh any kind of parental issues whether abandonment trauma whatever you know those types of things yeah the templates yeah you know, both parties need to be open and waiting and patient with with all that to make it work because we just see you know like the general population, it just seems to be in, I've seen this in France as well, because there's just that parental pressure to have kids as soon as you get married and like, hey, you know, I can't wait to be a grandfather or mother, what, you know what I mean? And what we see, you know, mm -hmm. generation after generation is, you know, kids having babies, having babies, more or less, you know, and not to like, you know, make fun of anyone, but, you know, it's just, you know, as far as like the level of Say that again, Amy. Oh, the blind leading the blind. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unconscious. Unconscious. Yeah. Yep. And um, so we we want to be good parents. So we want to get paid to buy food, and then we drop our kids off at daycare, and our little children are wondering where the heck are our parents, and we don't realize that that's causing a lot of harm to them. That mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So it, yeah, we call daycare is don't care, really. Yeah, it's hard because, you know, I've had, you know, some daycare, you know, people that were really, really loving and good to my kids. But I'm really sort of like handing off this most precious, you know, um, being into another person's hands that. You know, we, we don't, you know, I'm looking back, right, you know, in terms of where I wasn't thinking clearly, you know, really far deep around the, the templating and that programming and not being conscious that it's in alignment with, with truth or my, my values, right? So it's almost like playing Russian roulette or the odds, you know, when you, kind of take your child to a daycare provider or a school and where you're really uh, losing more and more of the philosophical 
principle-based um, influence on your child. Um, Unless you go to some Rudolf Steiner type yeah. of school. Yeah, I mean, but I also, that, this is where I want to go with this, is there's also a need for community, right? And some truth to it takes a tribe or it takes a village to raise children, you know? And so how are you guys finding that balance with separating out from aspects of the world, but also, you know, um, are you have you been able to find a, a, a resonant community as well? How do you do that for your child? That's a great question. Um, we have a farmer's market down the street and um, there's a play date every Tuesday and it's wonderful. There's tons of kids and a trampoline and food, fresh vegetables. So that's really fun. Um, but they're closed for the winter, so that's what's tough. Um, but we're going to start our own school. It's going to be called Own School, and we're going to talk to David about different ideas, and we're going to different kids all over the community that want to join, and we're going to teach gardening, um, life skills, natural law, self self ownership, self defense, yeah. um, self responsibility, self mastery, self love. You know all the all that good stuff. And so we're going to take that to a new level. And so we're excited about that opportunity and see where that takes us. So we'll update you that. Right. I love the spirit of like when something isn't there and you create it, you know, that's, that's the spirit yeah, that we all need to take. Yeah. 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 It's exciting. That's, uh, so we wanted hip hop. So that, that phrase hip, means to know and hop means to move it's real simple so to know why we move right and uh wow. this is krs's knowledge but um we we know why we move because we're um you know spiritual beings having this physical experience and we want to share that knowledge with others and that uh, that truth, I guess. And we have natives out here, the natives, and they're, um, we have a wonderful friend, um, Toma, and Dwayne Toma, and um, he's gonna, we'd love to introduce this to him and see if he wants to teach the kids some native knowledge. The Passamaquoddy, uh, uh, Wabanaki tribe of the East, the people of the, uh, the, the uh, First Nations yeah. people, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we've been connecting with them. And he was real into learning about the natives when we first got here, our son. And he must have felt a mm -hmm. spiritual connection here. And he was wearing headdress of uh, the feathers mm -hmm. on and we was wanting to know about in you know the natives. And so we uh, you know, as unschoolers, we take we go learn where his interests are and learn about all the stuff we can facilitate that knowledge and learning. It's yeah, it's, it was and, really sad with that stuff, but very important. Yeah. What yeah, would you it's, say? It's tough. To, oh, go ahead. What would you say to the parents that say, "Well, I I'm not qualified to homeschool or unschool. I don't know about physics, or you know, I'm not really good at math." You know, how do you um, bridge that gap? You know, in the homeschooling unschooling experience. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a tough one because that that ignorance is it's hard, and when we take that, we give that power away. It's hard to get it back, you know. Um, but I would say look around in the area for people doing that same thing, and maybe you can find something that you don't have to be doing it all the time with your son. You can drop him off at a place where they do nature learning or gardening or whatever it is, you know. Um, and try to work with people that are doing the same thing you are doing, which can be hard, but um, there's there's groups that you can look into around wherever you are located. So there's like a networking yeah. opportunity. It's always exists in most communities, right? You, it, being an unschooler or homeschooler yeah. doesn't mean that you are the only one teaching, but you might connect your child with, you know, the Native American guy, you know, or, um, other, yeah. or yeah, there's, yes, 
No, that's, that's a great point. That apprenticeship, yeah. Yeah, I like that apprenticeship. Um, teaching, yeah, bringing people together with, you know, people that are doing it and having mentors. Um, that's the best way to learn hands-on experience um, to learn. Is John Paul, you brought up a really good point that, you know, in my question, it just sort of reflects a divide already of programming that most of, you know, us have that we're not qualified. How do I, how can I be a teacher? Right. I don't know. I, I've thought about that. A lot of people, it's like really have deferred their, um, you know, it is an authority thing. It's like deferring to the expert, you know, you have to have the degree or the credential to be able to do the, this job. I, I'm not qualified, you know, and there's a, a lack of self-confidence in our own ability to be like self-learners, you know, and I'm saying, well, look, yes. if you don't know it, you, you can learn, you know, and you can find people to learn from, right? It's a different yes, that's mindset. Kind of yeah, that's our attitude too. We we take that responsibility and we don't doubt ourselves too. We try not to. I mean, because with that knowledge you gain confidence and uh and trust that he will learn. Yeah, and they're first. geniuses. They they're little geniuses just soaking it all in. And so when we can facilitate that, cultivate it and not uh, get in the way, then it can really be a beautiful thing watching your child blossom into the flower they are, you know? So you've observed that your child has a natural drive to learn. If you don't have to worry about them like being stagnant, right? The growth no. is just part of who your child is, yeah. Yeah, I think you just um, are always thirsty and want to know more on any topic and you know and he's we have the arc too from Passio and we watch that's basically his education the arc yep, yep. um we wow. watch you know move, movie on anything and everything bigfoot we love big and uh so ufos so yeah we he he just soaks it all in and uh we don't watch tv we don't watch violent stuff you know um, and so, yeah, we're just kind of raising him how we wish we would, we were raised, I guess, free. You wow. know? Yeah, without the, all the distractions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we give, we give him a choice. So that's uh, important. So to talk more about that, how, about the choices. That's yeah, I never had choices growing up. I had, um. I was forced into most things, sports and church and school, like I said. Um, and that doesn't really work. Forced learning isn't something, you know, you want to, you're not going to really remember a whole lot and you're not going to have a good experience. So therefore the knowledge and the skills, I didn't really learn many skills to teach, I had to go out to experience in the world, the world is is our school. We and, and we don't have to go in those little buildings and keep you away from nature all day. Now, how is that going to help our child? Um, and just yeah, the, just kind of questioning everything really. And when you do the history of the schools, and they you know Rockefeller wanted a bunch of think workers, not a bunch of thinkers. Yes. So, so you're teaching your child. There's a difference between teaching a child what to think and how to think. Yes. Right? And asking questions oh. seems really important to that. Huh? Yes. Yeah. We, I, we, we tell them, you know, you can ask us anything. We're not going to lie to you. And we're always here for you, loving you. No question is a student, honey. So ask away. You know, it's an open home. Um, we can ask anything we want to. And um, and you do you allow him to say no? 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's been so hard because when he says no to us, when we respect him and we he teaches us every day about mm. you know, he's equal to us and he can say no and we have to respect him and yeah he holds us very accountable for our word mm -hmm. so that's really a good uh, practice for us yeah and, uh, this is so we, we, vital this is a huge yeah, pivot from you, the mainstream yeah yeah do as you say and say as you do and you said this daddy but we didn't do that and so i i gotta do as i say and he keeps us keeps us in humble line. yeah it keeps mm -hmm. us in check definitely yeah but he doesn't have to do everything you say in a way right like that that's like yeah. this yeah. i think the catch the challenge parents have is like them wanting to be the authority and tell their kids what to do and that there's this whole thing if you say if a child says no they're being oppositional you know and it sets up you know this power dynamic which distracts from actual learning and growing because you get in this power struggle, whether it's with your teacher, your school, your parent, who's not honoring the child's um, kind of their own right to sometimes say no. I mean, obviously there's safety things, but how do, how do you work that with your child? I like the accountability point. Yeah, that's a tough one, you know, because he has that stubbornness like we have, but it's just, we were, we got to respect them and oh, well, it's on to south. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, he, or he can say yes, he has that. And so we just respect him um, like we would anybody. And um, when, when I grew up, I remember hearing, because I'm your mom. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Well, I said, said so. so. And, and I'm, you know, yeah. and you're like little kid going, wait a minute, what about me? Do I get to decide anything? Yeah. And so I didn't want to do that with him. <laughs> it yeah. is. You can't wait to grow up. Yeah. Right. And then you spend a decision. lot of your years like proving to the world that you get to make your own decisions. You know, I think like teenage years become a lot more volatile because of kids like finally realizing I don't have to do what I'm told, you know, like I can say no, I'm big enough now, you know, and, and I think yeah. that that's an unnecessary um, tension, like it doesn't have to be so dramatic, right? Yeah, because they're projecting a lot of, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, just real quick, because, you know, I'm sorry for the quality of the audio on their behalf, just because, you know, they they're off grid, you know, and like for internet, all that stuff. So yeah, they're. Yeah, we're having a little audio issues yeah, sometimes, absolutely. Derek. You're freezing too on my end. <laughs> so yeah, Ooh. we apologize for our audio yeah, a, glitches. I'm, I'm not even in a in the place I'm supposed to be at. Yeah, I apologize for that as well. But uh, yeah, to bring it back when you know when they're back, because uh, actually yeah. no, Leslie and I we made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> The, oh. the last episode we had was with Will Keller, actually. That's oh, yeah. this is episode number seven. And oh, we had a yeah. great discussion with Will Keller, and uh, it's not out yet, is up, but uh, oh. you know, he spoke a lot about just you know, that episode was about just like the individual kind of just like realizing the world around him and everything like that. And Division in, from nature, yeah. self, and spirit, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems like what yeah. you guys have that you've laid down such a proper foundations within yourselves to, you know, share that with your child and let let him explore and do, you know, make his own choices. That th that's so vital. And, you know, where you guys got cut off, you guys were talking about how, you know, when you're a teenager, yeah, you are more projecting from, you know, that, up, you know, frustration and not being able to like fully express yourselves. And you guys have just like, you know, set up just like the where you guys are at, the environment around you. And then like the the nucleus environment uh, it just seems like such a nurturing and uh, like that super fertile soil for that seed to just grow and blossom like you're saying. So yeah, hats off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We appreciate that for recognizing us. It's, it's uh takes sacrifice. We made our faces and uh, our families think we're crazy, you know, but it's, uh, but it, being courageous, right? And having mm. not being the uh, 
and falling into cowardice, laziness, and the apathy, and the ignorance. And uh, that's really been our foundation. And yeah, uh, well, you yeah. wanna say something? Yeah, we've come a long ways for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're all on a growth path, right? In our own unique ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think it ever stops, you, it, right? Right, correct. Yeah, Amy, you <laughs> mentioned um, a bit back about how you maintain a loving relationship with your mom, even though you have differences. Can you talk a little bit mm -hmm. about your approach to keeping the loving connections, even with your maybe saying no to certain um, aspects of your family's tradition? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it takes courage to voice how you really feel. And so I suggest anybody who's in that situation to voice how you feel and to come at it with love. Um, I always say to my mom is, I love you so much and I care about you. So that's why I'm telling you these things. And I try to tell her to not take it personal um, and to come with an open mind. And I've been putting seeds in my mom's brain for probably four years. And she's now be open to these discussions. And don't, I just wanna let people know, don't give up on your family. Um, just because they might not be open right now doesn't mean that they're never gonna be open again. And and um, I didn't give up on my my family, and I'm I'm glad that I have um, a relationship with them still. And they're so proud of us because they see that we're doing the right thing. They can see that we're doing what we need to do for our son. And so it just takes time, and just be patient. Um, but come at it from a state of love, and remind them you love them. And that's what I've done. Yeah, I love that. I, I think the value on relationship is, is important and um, developing that uh, courageousness around communication and that persistence, like loving persistence. Um, yeah. and, and I think, you know, there can be a lot of sadness and grief um, in those tension points, right, you know, with family, and sometimes family will reject the, the, reject the black sheep, you know, or the one who's branching off, you know, more so than others. So there's a lot, a lot to deal with, right? It's not always easy. Yeah, of course, yeah, they stand out absolutely. a little bit more. Yeah. Sorry, John, you're good. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's tough being, um, you know, called the crazy one. But I always said, you're the crazy one. They're the crazy one. So, but knowing, having that knowledge, you know, and uh, gives you that knowledge of knowing these laws, the spiritual laws that are inherent in this three dimension, you know, really makes so much sense. Do no harm. Do not steal. And uh, I wasn't taught these things really, you know, mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, neither was I uh, to a decent degree. Parents that were, you know, pretty good, like not keyed into you know, a lot of the these hermetic principles and all that stuff. And yeah, after my awakening, you know, because which stemmed from me, you know, having a, you know, a heart activated, you know, care to want to be a better man and learn as much as I can to be, cause I was married at the time in Paris and, you know, with my wife, just trying to, you know, keep the, that marriage life fresh and, and be the best man I can. And then, then, you know, realizing that, holy shit, there's a lot I don't really know about in the world or like maybe half know about teach my kid, you know? Like, <laughs> so that, that in and of itself lit yeah. such a huge fire up my ass, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. 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 The responsibility of parenting, of recognizing that, you know, the parents are the foundation for that child's um, mental state, their emotional, physical, spiritual self, right? And to take that very seriously, thoughtfully. Yes. Yeah. And just, yeah, they just really want your attention, you know, that's it. They just, they don't want, 
Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think there's like a little like two second delay on the audio, but uh, didn't mean to cut you off. But uh, yeah, to finish up, I mean like, yeah, there were th certain things that I kind of like I almost like resented my parents just because I didn't learn it. I mean, it was just them. It was like any kind of authoritative figure where you know you grow up in the world, you you know kind of assume you're supposed to like learn these things, but they're all like hidden, occulted, if you will, which just means hidden, right? Yeah. And I said that before, it's such a trigger word for. Some at the same time, I realized that I had to re-parent myself to a good degree, you know, and kind of integrate those things that I felt were lacking because I was kind of a latchkey kid and had abandonment issues myself. But being able to, you know, understand the parental and mother figure and just trying to insert myself into those roles for my own self, you know, because I don't have that implemented within myself. How am I, how am I going to be a good parent almost, you know? So, yeah, that's a yeah. great yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Interesting, and like, I was thinking about that, but I mean, like John Paul, like you were saying, like like this massive explosive, you know, awakening, when you're it just like a frequency shift and you, you don't have the grammar to like articulate it or like navigate through it. So yeah, we might ebb and flow, you know, in and out of the matrix. Cause you know, it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know, so yeah. say love yeah. you, but uh, yeah, back to you guys. <laughs> it's like reparenting ourself and then hopefully when you have a, a new baby in your life, you're aware, self-aware enough, right, and conscious of the choices because that's very different than just being a well-meaning parent, you know, a well-meaning role model that's still very uh, mesmerized and hypnotized by the, by the mainstream, um, you know, messaging. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say too to um parents is to go with your instinct. It's very very important we forget about um that we have done this for us. We parented and um we have this in our DNA to parent and to more go inward than on the books and the um, people that tell you what to do more from a instinct. Um, and yeah, the intuition, absolutely. Intuition, yep. That's what we've done. Yeah. Kind of like the very act of giving birth, like trusting your body. And then, yeah. you know, you're also kind of saying that we have, when you're maybe um, have detoxified from a lot of the programming, you can fall back on a, a deep knowledge within your own dna of how to connect and parent your child that's interesting absolutely and we learned a lot from the animals the animals the birds are amazing parents some of the birds um really dedicated parents and uh yeah that helped teach us a lot really. they don't send them to school they teach them what they know and what they they need to know to function in in nature and so we can learn a lot from our animal friends. So Absolutely. really being good observers of nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we love observing. Absolutely, nature. Being out there in that stillness, you know. You feel connected to everything. Yeah, yeah. we're all interconnected energy. And uh, yeah. they never told us that, um, right. having this human experience love can connect this right but fear divides us and that's why mm -hmm. we got to unite right now we're all in this together yes we are and the love illusion mm -hmm. is the solution we could yeah. change this place yeah. overnight if we started loving ourselves truly push aside those differences those little tiny differences and come to our true right. essence that we really are. Right. Mm -hmm. and face face those divides with with loving communication, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah. healthy Open boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a great point. So so we're at about an hour and a half. Maybe to switch gears a little bit, and um, I want, and then you know, wind down is I'd love for you to share about your um your your inspirations around nutrition dr sebi your um health uh the uh superfoods that you 
you've, I don't know if you've made them or, you know, just to talk about that and the importance of that in your life and as being as parents as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, well, we have our superfood. It's a health supplement. Here's mm -hmm. the uh, bottle here. Levolution superfood. We got the bladder rack, iris sea moss and bird root blend Dr. Sebi created to uh, basically alkaline our bodies so they thrive right instead of uh, yeah. function his research said that um his knowledge said that disease can't um, last in an alkaline environment so our ph is very important and he has research and um, tons of data to back that up um, so the seaweed supplement helps get mucus which is one of the leading causes of disease. And it removes the mucus and it um, creates an alkaline environment within the body. Um, it has vitamins A, B, C, D, E, N, K, minerals such as iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, um, iodine, which is very important for balancing our hor hormones, which also affect our mental state. It's also amazing for immunity booster, um, energy, a lot of our clients say they have so much more energy taking this supplement. It's really good for bones, uh, muscle, joints. Uh, it's a detox, helps cleanse the bloodstream, but it also regenerates the cells. So this is an all in all, and um, it's made for all ages. We give it to our son so we know he's getting the vitamins, minerals that he needs to thrive. Um, you can visit our website at levolution.net, and there's great information on there about it. And well, yeah, we wanted to create a product, something that would give benefit people, not just some random piece of plastic. So we uh, wanted, yeah. um, you know, health is wealth, and uh, we need to take that seriously and really uh, take take our health in hands and be responsible um, with our health because there's so much deception coming at us all over the place. You, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So uh, it's an um, underwhelming talk important. about the gut brain connection and how that, you know, like if we don't have a functioning brain properly, you know, like it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, the gut, um, body, mind, connection the brain heart brain coherence um is super important um but yeah we've been taking this for since we started i feel like i'm 18 and i'm 43 and uh yeah just tons of energy and yeah it's from um the rocks in the ocean it's right from mother earth all of these ingredients are fresh and raw which means they're not cooked it's in the purest form and so you're getting all that nutrition that you really need um you can open the capsules some of our customers put them in the soups they smoothies, put them on yeah. smoothies smoothies me yeah <laughs> salads Soups are really good too, it kind of gives it that salty seaweed, sea, sea mm -hmm. flavor. Yeah, your own version yeah. of a Caesar salad. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we were on, on Amazon. We got off of there, Evil Empire. So um, because of our morals, you know, we couldn't really work with them as a middleman. And so we, uh, we, a lot of good reviews of people who were benefiting, enjoying it. And uh, we chose the moral high ground and get out of there. And uh, mm -hmm. we're on Etsy and eBay as well, as well as our website. Yeah, I really admire your the way you guys strive for alignment, you know, between your 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 principles and your behaviors, that alignment between mind, body, spirit, thoughts, feelings, actions, um, and yeah. standing behind them, you know, with your decisions. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, bit by bit, the road for each of us to follow is that alignment towards alignment to truth. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. the real law of attraction, like Passio, Mark Passio says. So as we align with these laws in the universe, 
our lives become so much more beautiful and harmonious. And um, I suggest if anybody is looking to learn about all these laws and align with them, please look into it. You will be so happy that you did. Yeah. You really will be. You have on your website, I, I really like uh, your resource page. You have a whole page with links to a lot of your, you know, people that have inspired you and where you've uh, learned some of this knowledge from. And that's lovely to, you know, to share. And it makes it easy for people to find direction through that page. I want to refer people to your website. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. We started that page so people could have a place to go. Yeah. And start learning yeah from people yeah. like yourself that have taught us so much. And you know, thank you so much. Derek, yeah. We can't hear you, Derek. Can't hear you. Derek, can you- I have uh, my, my uh, mic muted on? for the most part. I wanted to say just like, yeah, bravo. Oh, thank you so much and all that. But, uh, yeah, no worries. Yeah. You guys are awesome. yeah, what you guys are doing is great. Really oh, phenomenal nice. work, both of you guys. Yeah, yeah so really, really me. glad to have gotten to meet you guys, um, really admire what you're doing. Oh, and um, yeah, people can learn from you, your story. Thank you, likewise. Yeah, yeah we're all leaders here. Party? We got it. <laughs> yes, it is. It's our uh, coming out party right here. On the yeah. Ooh, yeah. No way. Yeah, we, had a one, we had one interview for about four years ago. Um, through a friend who was at right. a show called Down the Rabbit Hole with Kay. And uh, mm -hmm. that was a fun interview. But this is, yes, this is like our coming out party. So appreciate it, guys. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Well, I hope to have more interactions in the future. Um, yeah, oh, everybody check definitely. out Levolution, your website and um, your products, and uh, be inspired. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and let's thank we have you so much. For <laughs> You're so welcome. Yeah, thank you guys. And keep doing the great work. Much love evolution to you guys. I oh, love it. Good name. Hell yeah. Makes me want to sing. It reminds me of a song. Yeah, we the kind of want to. The love evolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. Uh, you say you want evolution. Well, you know. We, we can change the world. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, one, one That's soul. so awesome. Yeah, bring the vi high vibes of music and dance and love and song. It's That's awesome. it. All right. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. We, 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 uh, and use it as like a greeting too. Love Evolution is like a hello kind of, you know, to, as a yeah. reminder to do, a be doing that in yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, we love yeah. you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was such a pleasure yeah, talking with you. Again. Yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. Yes. Till the next time. And keep. Yes, love yourself. Don't forget. Every day. Yeah. I'm dissolving those divides all around you. They're everywhere. No, <laughs> yes, absolutely. They're just crumbling. Yeah, much love to the Yeah, listeners. much love to you guys and your little much guy there. Love. Yeah, and good luck Thank with your you. school, Thanks. this like development of this yeah. like very natural very um, school yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We'll, All right. We'll be in touch. Keep you posted. Okay. Awesome. Have All a right. Good day, good. guys. Love. Sure. You. Bye, guys. Yeah. Peace.
one life, one love. Tell me this, are you prepared to live? Energy that we exchange is imperative. Intricate, so simple. Life is the spirit and the body is the temple. One life, one love. 